Hi there, this uh, video is going to help you to factorise quadratic expressions uh, where the value of a is not equal to 1. Okay, uh, so I'm basically just going to take you through a few examples of how you can use a sort of reverse grid method to work out your factorisation um, and figure out what brackets would give you your quadratic expression. So if I just take you through a few examples, the first one um, is 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. And what I need you to do is I need you to think about how you might have got that using the grid method. If you're familiar with the grid method, um, you would be looking at multiplying a couple of brackets. Let's say they were 2x minus 3 and 3x plus 4, like this. You would multiply your brackets out. OK, you would put your answers in the grid like this and then you would simplify those two together to give you an answer 6x squared minus x minus 12. Now that's obviously not the correct factorization. I haven't used the right brackets here, the 2x minus 3 and the 3x plus 4 to give me my answer. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a sort of reverse grid method to try and figure out what numbers should be in the brackets. So what we can fill in on the grid immediately are those two numbers there, the value of a being 6 and the value of c which is negative 3. And the first thing that you want to do, this is the sort of magic bit, is to multiply a times c, a being 6, c being negative 3, multiply them together you get minus 18. Okay, you'll see why we do that in a minute. Then you want to write down the value of b. Remember, go back to your original expression. The value of b is a 7, like that. Okay. Now, this is the bit which is familiar to people who have factorised single bracket, uh, not single brackets, sorry, quadratics where a is equal to 1. You're going to look for two numbers which have a product of negative 18 and a sum of 7. OK, now that's quite simple. You just start listing the things that multiply to make 18, like 2 and 9. And then you start thinking, right, how can I make a 7 from them? Well, I could make a 7 if I had a 9 and a negative 2, because together they would add up to make 7, and they would multiply to make negative 18. Now, the good thing about those numbers is they're now going to be these numbers in your grid. You need to pop a little x on them, 9x and negative 2x. Um, and then you need to just check in your head, does that together, that bit there, does that simplify to make your positive 7x? If it does, you're in business. Now, what we want to do is we want to fill in these numbers here and here, these numbers and letters along the top and down the side, to try and get our brackets. The easiest way I've found to do this is to look for common factor here, what goes into 6 and 9. Well, 3 is the highest number that goes into 6 and 9. And then an x goes into both of those expressions, those, both of those terms, I should say. So I've got 3x here, and now I'm simply going to play a multiplying game, basically. I'm going to try and find something that multiplies to make 6x squared. Um, so 3x times by, well, I need a 2, because that will be my 6. And I need another x to make x squared. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this term here, 3x times by what? Well, I'm going to need a 3 to make the 9, and I don't need any more x's. Then I'm going to look at this term here, 2x, and I want to make minus 2x, so I need a minus 1. And then, as a last check, I just multiply 3 by minus 1, and I get a minus 3. So what I've done there is I've figured out my two brackets. The first bracket along the top there, and the second bracket down the side there, 2x plus 3, 3x minus 1 it's factorised. OK, so I'll take you through a second example, um, just so you get a second viewing of the method here. Um, this is question B. We're going to do 10x squared plus 18x minus 4. OK, so the first thing to do is to multiply, a, put a multiplication grid. Put this first term top left corner, last term in the bottom right corner. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write down our values of a, c. a times c is minus 40. And our value of b is 18. Remember, this is the product and this is the sum 
of our two numbers. So we start searching for things that multiply to make 40. 1 and 40, 2 and 20. Ah, I can make 18 from 2 and 20, especially if I have a minus 2 and a positive 20. So I've got a negative 2 and a positive 20, like that. And now I can simply go about my business. I've got to find a number that goes into both of those, well, 2 goes into both of those, and a letter x. 2x times by what? Well, I've got to make a 10. 2 times 5 makes 10, and x times x makes x squared. Right, 2x here. I'm timesing to make minus 2x, so I'm going to need a minus 1 there. I don't need any more x's. And 5x times by what? Well, how many of those do I need to make that? I need four of them. So now I'm looking at my brackets, and I have got 5x minus 1, and 2x plus 4. OK, and it's really quite straightforward. Now, this method does have a drawback. If you've got large numbers here and here, it's going to be really difficult to find the product and the sum um, and to find the two numbers that go in these positions. But basically, this, product is going to, uh, this method is going to work if you've got um, lower numbers um, and things that you can manipulate really easy. Just a very quick word. You could have done this one. You could have factorized this one slightly differently, and you could have actually got the answer. If you'd taken a factor of 2 out of this bracket and put it into that bracket, you could have got the answer to be that. Okay, Either of those would be acceptable, um, and in fact you could bring the 2 right out to the very front.